What's up, Pro Guides family? My name is Matt, and today we have the release of Act 3 and Patch 1.10. Today, we are seeing the release of a new skin line, map, and even competitive updates. But before we dive into all of that, you guys know what time it is. It is time for our question of the day. What are your thoughts on all the communication that Riot has had before this patch dropped? Riot has been very transparent about what they were bringing to the table with Act 3, while keeping the usual stuff quiet like the agent changes that we'll be getting into. Personally, I'm happy that Riot is being super communicative about what they're bringing in terms of big changes, so that the community isn't blindsided. It's not best to judge things before you experience them, but it definitely gives us all some heads up and info into why things are coming, which is a great move on Riot's part. But that's just our thoughts. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. Alright, alright, let's finally get into all of the changes. First up is probably the biggest addition coming in Act 3, a brand new map. Today, Icebox is being released, the newest map being added into Valorant's map pool. If you weren't expecting this new map and are worried about your rank, well, don't worry. The map isn't being added into the ranked queue until the 27th, giving you two whole weeks to get adjusted to the new map. You'll still be able to play the new map in unrated, so make sure to grind out some unrated matches on the new map as well. Icebox will have an increased chance to be played early on in the patch as well, so don't worry about not being able to practice it enough. There were also some changes to general movement, as acceleration was adjusted to prevent sudden shifts in direction. This was to help combat being too evasive on zip lines, along with adding weapon tagging while getting shot on Icebox's zip lines. What is unfortunate though is that no matter what, we are all going to be stuck with only unrated at launch. Turns out that last night Riot has already discovered one rare but game breaking bug. Because of that we're not going to be getting ranked today, and some of you might have already noticed that the servers went down, or may even still be down, by the release of this video. The servers went down at 6am PST to begin service on the new patch, and return for NA, BR and LATM, at around 9am PST. Once this patch has stabilised, Riot promises that they will turn on ranked but we don't know if they mean hours or days. I doubt it's going to take them long to fix, but still we could see rank to be down for a day or two depending on just how serious the bug is. Ascent and Bind also received some minor changes to update the vision cones on the map not displaying correctly. Regardless, Icebox will launch into unrated and your custom matches, so scrims and unrated matches can still be played to experiment with the new map. We will be coming out with a full analysis on Icebox in the coming days, so be sure to subscribe to make sure you don't miss that video. Next up, you know we gotta cover the quality of life changes. Riot has made a whole host of changes, but we're going to be covering the interesting ones here for you guys. To start, we now have a tournament mode for our custom games. This tournament mode just allows for up to 12 observers to watch a match, which really should help the competitive viewing experience. Having 12 spots open for observers could really improve the production value for tournaments, and I'm honestly pretty excited to see how the big tournaments are going to implement this into their streams. On top of that, observers can now hold the walk key while in free cam to reduce their speed. Another change added to improve the lives of observers and by effect us watching those games. Being able to have a good viewing experience in a game can directly lead to a thriving competitive scene, so updated observer tools or making the experience better will always help to make Valorant just a little bit more accessible or enjoyable to watch, and that really does go a long way. There weren't just observer updates though, as we did get one change that I think a lot of people have been asking for. We can finally sell requested guns back to the shop. Now don't worry, if you were the one who bought your teammate a weapon, the money gets refunded back to you, so your teammates can't request a weapon just to yoink the cash from you. It's a small change, but at the very least it's going to make me feel better when I click a little bit too fast and end up requesting the wrong gun. Coming up next though, we have what might be the most controversial part of the update, which is the new skin line. 
Riot is no stranger to inflated prices in Valorant, with bundles like Elderflame retailing for a cool 9,900 Valorant points. Even though some people bought it, maybe even someone on, on the writing team, I'm not throwing shade, I'm not throwing any shade. It definitely was an exorbitant amount for a lot of players. The new Singularity skins, which admittedly do look pretty slick, come in at a cool 8,700 Valorant points for the bundle. The question is though, are they actually worth the money? Well, with a striking, angular and futuristic look, they certainly do look nice. Parts of the Phantom, Sheriff, Spectre and Ares also glow a vibrant purple in the base version, adding to the look. The design is definitely appealing to some, and with the VFX upgrades allowing your weapon to expand and contract with shooting, reloading and equipping. Honestly, with the upgrades it looks even better and the death animation is also pretty sweet. But at the end of the day, is it actually worth 8,700 Valorant points? To some people, probably. To the majority of the Valorant player base, eh, probably not. There will always be the individual skins that you can purchase and upgrade without buying the bundle and that will probably be more attractive to a lot of people. But the prices will still be 2,175 Valorant points per skin, which is not a small amount of money. I have to give Riot one point for at least making the skins as non-intrusive to the gameplay as possible. I've never felt a need for a weapon or an advantage coming from a skin. So while it might attract people asking you to swap guns, at least purchasing a skin will only make your screen slightly more colourful. Deathmatch has received quite a few changes with the release of patch 1.10. Firstly, the player count was increased from 10 to 14 players. Riot says that now they have updated their backend and can support more than 10 players in a game, and with more players it should be easier for players to actually find a fight. They have also removed the constant minimap pulse that you would get to reveal enemy locations. Now you will only get that revealing pulse when you respawn as to level the playing field a bit. The match length was also increased from 30 kills to 40, and the time limit was up from 6 minutes to 9. All around, we haven't even covered all the changes coming to Deathmatch, and it is already looking better than it was before. Deathmatch always suffered from that problem where it rarely felt like you were having a fair fight. It would always be shooting people in the bag or dealing with corner campers, and these changes really do look like they're going to help improve Deathmatch to make it a more viable choice for warming up. Finishing up the changes, getting a kill will now reload your weapon, while the Ares and Odin will get 30 bullets back, and XP from completing a deathmatch game has been increased from 500 XP to 900. We really like these changes coming to the deathmatch this patch, and I think it's going to open up the opportunity for more people to get into Valorant, as honestly, deathmatch could get pretty sweaty and also boring when you run around for 30 seconds and can't find anyone to fight. Taking the next spot on today's list is none other than the new Battle Pass. With the release of a new act will always come the release of a new Battle Pass, and this one is pretty similar to our last two. The Battle Pass costs 1000 Valorant points and features 50 tiers for you to climb, seemingly the standard for Battle Passes in Valorant. However, unlike the last two Battle Passes, there doesn't seem to be a consistent skin line throughout the pass. There are still some cool items featured like the Gum Buddy Chili McFreeze, Radionite Hazard Player Card and a new Viper Spray, all rewards that look pretty cool for their grind, and I hope Riot keeps up their standard for their later battle passes. Other than that, there is not too much to say. Let us know in the comments down below if you plan on buying this battle pass, because I think I, you know, I might drop the $10 for it, maybe. With Act 3, we are getting a lot of new content and that is great to see. But on top of all that we've talked about already, we're also getting a new agent, Sky. She isn't releasing today like she normally would be, but is instead releasing on October 27th, two weeks from now. We already know her ability, as Riot has made an official video going over them, and we actually have a video talking about her and her abilities up already. We won't be able to give you guys an analysis this time, but if you are still interested in what we can do, we recommend checking out that video that we just mentioned. Next patch, when Sky officially goes live, we'll be bringing her up and recapping all the info we have about her in a video just like this one, and including her in our tier list. Until then, just remember to take a look at her abilities and prepare for her arrival, as she could definitely shake up the meta. 
Finally, today we are going to talk about some of the competitive changes that came with Act 3. When Ranked does launch, Riot reduced the amount of ranks that you can queue up with, from within 6 ranks to only 3. That means if you are a Plat 3 player, you used to be able to queue up and get Immortal 3 players or down to Silver 3 players. In this season, if you are Plat 3, you will only be able to queue up to and get Diamond 3 players and down to Gold 3 players. This reduction in ranks will help balance out sometimes seemingly unfair matchmaking and help to improve the solo queue experience a little bit. Riot also changed Immortal and Above ranking to be determined only by win and loss. That means no matter how badly you might have performed in a win at Immortal, you can still gain a lot of elo. This will be helpful for Sentinel and Controller players as they tend not to necessarily perform as well at high levels because their role is much more utility based. You will also be able to select the server that you would like to queue into, so hopefully that means less accidentally joining your neighbouring servers and to be stuck on 80 ping. Though Riot did say that you can choose a preferred server and you will be more likely to get that server, it's not a guarantee. There might be times where you'll have to play on a different server, but that number of times should hopefully be reduced. Other than that, there isn't much to say. Right now, we just have to sit and wait until Riot thinks things are good enough to enable Ranked, and then I'll be able to test out some of these new features for myself. Starting our tier list off today, we have none other than Cypher. Cypher has been a staple in the Valorant meta for quite a while now. With his ability to shut down aggression and prevent rotations, he's remained at the top of our list for a while. Being popular also helps Cypher's case as he gets access to a large player base that is willing to find new tricks and techniques with him, which is not a power that should be underestimated. As we have been saying for a while, until we see some changes come to him or some of his sentinel friends, we think Cypher will remain comfortably at the number one spot. Coming up next in the S tier is the guy who will chain flash you into oblivion, Breach. Breach has remained pretty comfortable in S tier ever since some of the changes to Faultline, Rolling Thunder and Flashpoint. With Faultline now unscoping operators, Rolling Thunder being faster and Breach having access to 3 flashes, well I'm sure we have all felt the pain in our matches. Breach simply excels at being able to run in and mess up the enemy's day, and when duelist agents are very much the meta right now, Breach can give you an easy way to overrun a site. Breach has gone pretty good, but honestly he doesn't feel overpowered, and we like that. So Breach will still remain comfortably in our S tier. Moving on to the next agent in the S tier, Omen has decided to arrive. Another familiar face in the S tier, Omen has simply been able to pull ahead in the controller battle. Between Brimstone being a bit too limiting for people's liking, and Riot not being able to figure out what the heck they want to do with Viper, Omen has pulled ahead as a reliable and powerful choice. With not only access to two rechargeable smokes and two kinds of teleportation, he also has a room clearing flash that can travel through walls and really mess up your day. All in all, Omen is in a good spot, and until Brimstone and Viper get some love, we are probably going to see Omen remain on top. Lastly for our S tier, it's none other than the Bladestorm herself, Jet. Jet has been a consistent top pick, especially for using the Operator, which is now a very neutered weapon. Luckily, Jet still has quite a few things going for her, including some great mobility and potentially access to three smokes per round. While some of the other duelists lack in certain areas, Jet seems to be able to cover all of her bases. While there are definitely other viable duelists, as we'll get into in a second, Jet has managed to edge out a spot to round off our S tier. Starting off the A tier today is none other than Phoenix. Being a reliable duelist, Phoenix has seen a lot of solo queues recently. When there were more tournaments and pro play, we would still consistently see Phoenix being picked and utilized to great effectiveness. With his ability to force enemies off angles or self-heal if he'd taken too much damage, Phoenix has an answer to almost anything. His run it back will still piss off many a player, and Phoenix's self-heal shouldn't be underestimated. As it stands right now, Phoenix is a solid pick, and we don't see that changing anytime soon. Next up in the A tier is the Owl Droning, Recon Bolting, Double Shock Arrowing, 200 IQ man himself, Solva. As a member of the Initiator class, he has been slightly outclassed recently by Breach. 
Now, that's not to say that Sova isn't a good agent, as his recon and shock arrows are more than capable of turning around a round. However, the skill required to use him effectively has always been a barrier for him, and unfortunately that hasn't changed. Learning new recon bolt lineups is one of the things that pretty much defines Sova's kit and playstyle, but it is also arguably the hardest part to get right. Right now, Sova is still a solid pick all round, just be sure to learn some arrow lineups. Finishing off our A tier today is the lady that really likes splash damage, Raze. When it comes to duelists, Raze has definitely seen the most change over the course of the game. Despite repeatedly being nerfed since the beta, you might think that she's become bad, but surprisingly she's managed to hold her ground. Part of it being her raw damage power on her paint shells, boom bot, and really every ability. But part of it is also that she is one of Cypher's few counters. Raze's blast packs do a great job at cleaning out Cypher cyber cages and trap wires, so having a Raze on your team is always a safe bet. Beginning our B tier today is none other than Killjoy. She has been performing decently well lately, all things considered. She was doing exceptionally well at her launch, but after Riot hit her with a few nerfs, she has fallen a bit in power, but can still definitely be useful. Her turret is still able to spot enemies and tag them up until Killjoy can take care of them, and her alarm bot is still giving me a heart attack every time I hear it. So basically, she can still hold her own. Just remember to be careful where you put your utility, since enemies are able to see it relatively easy if they're paying attention. Dropping off inside our B tier once more is the former legend of Valorant, Sage. Sage has had it rough over the past patches, but for good reason. She was hailed as the queen of Valorant for quite a while, and for good reason. She was able to heal up her team while stalling the enemies, and it was pretty strong. Now though, she has been relegated to more of her controlling role than healing, as her heal has taken quite a few nerfs. Even through everything though, Sage remains playable, and her barrier orb and slow orbs are still very useful for preventing pushes and controlling enemy movements. As we move into the last few agents of our tier list, we meet Brimstone. Unfortunately, the times have not been kind to Brimstone, as he really has fallen out of the meta. Even with the buffs to his Stim Beacon last patch, it didn't feel like enough to bring him the attention that he needed. We figured that after the operator got changed, Brim would start to improve a little bit, but it just hasn't happened. While Brim definitely leaves a bit to be desired, he can still dish out the pain and the smokes when necessary. So, why not give him a try? As we round off our B tier, we once again meet Rainer, an agent that just can't seem to escape from inconsistency. Rainer even managed to get a nerf last patch on her ultimate. We think it was a fair change though, and it hasn't really impacted what Rainer is supposed to do. If you want to destroy people in solo queue and you know that you can out aim, then Rainer is the agent for you. But for the people who want consistency in their agents, Rainer can definitely feel pretty alien. While requiring kills to use abilities is a great idea, it struggles in a competitive environment. At the end of the day, she is definitely a fun pub stomper, and someone that you probably will have fun playing. Viper, the final agent in this tier list, and unfortunately, still the worst in our opinion. Viper has just seemed to never be able to find the player base or the stats needed to be relevant. With buff after buff coming patch after patch, we've seen Viper evolve over the past few months, but nothing has come from it. Her core issues still remain, she is just too punishing and not rewarding enough. It takes her a lot of time to either set up a simple smoke, or she might even accidentally put a toxic screen down wrong, and then it's useless for the rest of the round. While being able to see in her ultimate and not damaging her teammates was a nice bonus, we just simply need more to be done about Viper. Well everyone, unfortunately that is all we have for you today. As a quick reminder, if you are wondering why Sky wasn't in this tier list, don't worry. We will have another patch notes video coming out when Sky launches on October 27th. So be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to see where Sky lands. Don't forget to like this video while you're at it, and why don't you come over to ProGuides.com where we offer the best on-demand coaching around. Alright, remember to stay safe out there everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.